All right, now that we have all of our cabinet parts machined and ready to go, we're ready to apply edge banding. And if you remember, we are constructing a European cabinet. European cabinets don't have face frames. That is, they don't have solid wood on the face of the cabinet. So we're going to apply um, a wood veneer or a PVC veneer to the face of the cabinet, depending on you know what, what the final look is going to be. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Uh, we've got some choices. Here's a, a wood veneer. This is cherry, and it's real wood, fairly thin, has a sizing on the back edge of it, and we can apply that right to the face of the cabinet. Now, remember our cabinet parts are 19 millimeters in width. They make these oversized. They're about 23 millimeters in width, and we'll come, we'll apply it, and then we'll come along later and we'll trim it off. Here's a PVC, a polyvinyl chloride edge banding that's a plastic material that looks like wood. These types of edge bandings come in a wide variety of um, different wood species and we can get it also to look like plastic laminate. Here's one that looks like a, a laminate that's made by the Formica company. And then we can get it in solid colors. Here's a gray, there's white, black, and again, a myriad of, of colors. I should say that the larger shops don't do it this way. They, they have a, an edge banding machine, and, it, and they can range anywhere from oh, thirty to $60,000. Um, but for the small shop, this is a very good way to do this. And I might add, if you get to the point in your cabinet making where you know, you're doing so much edge banding that you can't quite afford to buy a $30,000 edge bander, but you can't stand to do it anymore in your shop, send it out. Find a company in town that has an edge bander and send it over to them and have them do it. It'll still be very cost effective for you. So let me show you the, the poor man's way of uh, putting edge banding on. So these are the tools I'm going to use. Got a pair of scissors, small hammer, I'm going to use the iron out of a plane. I use that for cutting. And then I've got a little tray here to hold my adhesive, and I've got some tape to hold the edge banding down to this board. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. I guess the first thing we need to talk about is the adhesive that we use. We're using a water based adhesive, it's a 3M's Fast Bond 30. It's a 30 NF, and that means non-flammable. Uh, back in the day when I started building cabinets, we used solvent-based uh, adhesives, and they were very smelly, and they kill brain cells, and they're just horrible stuff, very flammable. This is a very user-friendly material here. Um, it, it takes a little bit longer to dry than the solvent-based, but um, this is pretty much what everyone's using now. All right, the first step is to cut our edge banding to a nominal length. We're going to cut them just a little bit longer than the actual pieces that we are going to apply them to. This gives us room to tape. Once I get one cut, I'll just use it as a template and cut the rest. I need three pieces for the top, bottom, and shelf. And now I'm going to cut two pieces for my sides. And with this wood edge banding, you can actually just take it and break it. Can't do that with the PVC. Okay, now I'll get these out of the way and we will tape these pieces down to our board. Usually what I do is just take a piece of tape and put it down on the board, on the, just ad adhere it to the back side there, and then I can just stick these right under there like that. Now one thing I want to warn you about is with wood edge banding, you don't want to have them touching. In other words, I don't want this because when we put that adhesive on there, 
and it dries and we pull them apart, you'll tear the edge banding up. Now PVC won't do that, but wood edge banding will, will do that. So you want to make sure you don't have them touching. So there's that. There's our top, our bottom, and our shelf. Okay, now I'll come down to the other end and tape these two long pieces down. And we'll get our top, bottom, and shelf piece. Actually, I think these I'll just tape individually. All right, now we're ready to apply the glue. I want to apply the glue on my particle board first. That'll give it a chance to absorb into the grain or into the particles, and then we'll come back and hit it again. So what I like to do is, is just line them all up nice and flush. Notice that we, I showed you this earlier, but I had marked these sides and the top and bottom and shelf so that I knew which edge I wanted edge banded. When you're applying this glue to a piece of laminate or even your PVC edge banding, you want to go in a singular motion, in other words, just go one way. It's kind of hard to do that on this particle board because it absorbs so much of the material, so I, I don't worry about it on that. But the key thing to remember about this water-based adhesive is that you need to put it on very evenly. You don't want big blobs because it will take so much longer to dry. Okay, so I've got that pretty good. Let me move this back a little bit. Make sure that you get the ends really good. Get a lot of material on the ends here, a lot of glue. That's, that's where it'll start to come apart first, if it ever does. Okay, now I'm going to come over and do the edge banding. Can you imagine a shop doing this where they're making 100 cabinets a day? I don't think they would make very much money. Notice here I'm trying to go in just one motion. I'm not going back and forth. And that'll help it get a nice even coat. And notice that it, it has kind of a milky color to it now. And as it dries, it's going to become translucent. And it'll be kind of a, a shiny film that you'll see on there. And you'll know it's ready. And also, another way to tell whether it's ready is whether or not it'll transfer to your fingers. If you can feel it, feel it wet, uh, it's not ready to go. OK, so let's finish up here. Actually, we need to come back and, and hit this again, hit these parts, because they've, they've absorbed in all of that glue. And we'll just hit it one more time. And on this coat, I will try to just go in one direction. Again, I'm looking for blobs, like right here. You can see that. There's a big blob right there. And I'm just going to come along and smooth it down. OK, let's give it about 30 minutes, and then we will apply our edge banding. OK, I've given it about 30 minutes to dry. And I should note that you have about four hours. You have a window of about four hours to actually apply this onto the uh, cabinet members. So you want to just keep that in mind. But the biggest problem I see is rushing it. Don't rush it. Wait until you see a nice translucent film on this edge banding. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take the tape off and get ready to apply these pieces. So I'll start with this bottom and I'm just going to stand it up. One thing you want to look for before you actually apply is make sure that you haven't had dust land on your material. Uh, and I should also mention that you want to try to do this in a dust-free area. Don't do it in a part of the shop where, you know, right behind a table saw where there's lots of dust flying. So I'm going to 
take the edge banding, and what I do is, is I basically use my fingers as sort of indexing marks. So when I put it on, I use my fingers to feel the material so that I get an equal overhang on both sides. And I'm just going to take a hammer and a piece of wood and tap it down. We want to make sure that we have good adhesion here. And you can see this is really on there quite well. All right, we'll do this to all the pieces. Make sure that you, you know, don't get it off to one side like this. Try to get an equal amount of material on each end and on the edges as well. And don't try to flush it up on the edge. You want it to overhang. You want an overhang on both sides because you're going to trim that off. You can trim it off much cleaner than you can by trying to line it up. Now here's an example of some contaminant that's landed on there. You can take a look at that and I'm just going to pull it off with my fingers. This stuff is dry enough that, that you can do that. Take a look at the whole thing. Feels good. All right. All right, now we're ready to clip the ends off of these pieces. So we need to get this cut real nice and clean. So I'm going to take my block plane iron and just simply set it right on top and make sure that you have the beveled edge out. So you want that facing away from you. Get it nice and tight to the material and then just whack it. And it'll cut it off nice and clean. You know, the other thing you don't want to do is to angle this too much. You want to try to get it as straight up and down as you can. Okay, now all we have to do is clean the edges on the top and bottom of our pieces up. And we're going to use our block plane iron to do that. And I should note that this needs to be pretty sharp. So here's the technique. You're going to lay the plane iron flat on your material and then you're going to skew the plane iron towards the back of the piece. So watch, I just kind of go like that. Kind of move it back. I don't want to cut this way because that's going to pull the edge banding away from the material. I want to pull towards the back and just take little, little short cuts. And you may not get it all on the first try. You may have to go back and hit it again. And usually what I do is, is just kind of feel it. I'm going to hit it one more time and you can see now I'm getting down a little bit closer. But the key here is to hold this flat on this piece of material. You don't want to hold it up like this or you'll dig into your melamine. So hold it nice and flat. Okay, I'll do the other side. And then finally, I think it's always sort of a good measure at the end to come back and tap this again. Make sure that you have really good adhesion there. I'm going to use this 3M uh, adhesive remover. It's, it's a citrus base uh, material. And just spray a little bit on and kind of wipe off all of that excess glue that got on the edges. I would warn you to try to keep it away from your wood surface. You don't want to get this material on your wood because it may discolor it. So just use it on the melamine. 
Having said that, as a general precaution, clean all of your wood surfaces with lacquer thinner before any stain or finish is applied. Now that we've completed the edge banding of all of our cabinet parts, we're going to move over to the joiner and prepare our top and bottom to go into this rabbet.